Across industries, we're experiencing a wave of automation from smart factories to self-driving cars. With so many industries moving to autonomous operations, the modern CIO should also think about moving IT to an autonomous self-driving operation as well. And why do I say that? Well, every CIO, especially now with a recession on the horizon, is being challenged to do more with less. How does the CIO fund disruptive innovations such as digital transformation of the business while also paying to keep the lights on? And as the CIO and IT drive and support the digital transformation of sales, marketing, product development, and supply chain to improve quality while reducing costs, the next CIO would do well to think about how to digitally transform IT itself to help improve quality and reduce costs of services delivered by the IT organization. A big obstacle to achieving autonomous IT are all the numerous IT processes that span siloed management tools, which today are mostly done manually. One CIO shared that her IT staff was responsible for more than 80 such processes. Take the employee offboarding process as an example, which is very topical given the record number of employee terminations and resignations companies are facing today. Employee offboarding can be described as separation to recovery, or S2R, with six distinct stages, separate, deprovision, reassign, recover, reallocate, and end of life. For most companies, this process is deployed through a patchwork of manual and error-prone workflows involving multiple teams and multiple handoffs navigating in and out of multiple point tools. For instance, so off an employee likely requires multiple people to complete a variety of tasks working through a variety of tools, such as you need to terminate the employee in an HR system, you need to notify stakeholders of the change in employee status. You have to deactivate single sign-on and identity solutions, revoke access to on-premises and SaaS applications, and you need to lock up corporate laptops. You have to reassign ownership of documents, data, and cloud resources. You need to return application licenses to an entitlement pool. You have to re-image and return employee-issued devices back into inventory and you have to destroy devices if they're near end of life. And these are just a few of the many likely tasks required to offboard an employee. Now, if an employee isn't offboarded properly, this leaves companies at risk of ex-employee theft. In fact, according to one survey, 12% of all employees take sensitive intellectual property with them when they leave an organization. And in another survey, 42% of organizations report at least 5% instances of unauthorized access to SaaS and cloud resources after the employee's departure. The post-COVID hangover has only heightened the sex employee security risk all companies face. When the pandemic hit, businesses across the board scrambled to deploy tremendous amounts of technology in a hurry. But as good meaning employees rallied in the heat of the moment to stand up new on-premises and cloud-based infrastructure in record time, many security safeguards were missed. Yet, as we've settled into the new normal of running hybrid workforces, many companies haven't gone back and figured out the precise details around what technology they have deployed, not addressing crucial data hygiene and potential security exposures. For example, many businesses don't have accurate data on which employees have access to sensitive data, such as login credentials into cloud instances or CRM accounts. During a time when 88% of organizations are deploying apps and workloads on public clouds, and on average, middle-large enterprises rely on over 187 SaaS applications. And unfortunately, the risk of cyber attacks by ex-employees is very real. A former employee of Square downloaded customer reports containing 8.2 million names and brokerage account details, certainly a regulatory compliance violation. A system admin at an American college changed the Google password, blocking email and shutting down communications across the school's faculty, administration, and students. An Amazon ex-employee who was not off-boarded properly and still made access to Amazon got into Capital One application files and sifted through a misconfigured web application firewall. This breach affected over 100 million people in the U.S. and Canada. Memorial Healthcare Systems was fined $5.5 million because a former employee's logger credentials were used without notice for nearly a year and protected information was accessed. That all said, the fact that many of these processes are performed manually today also means there is great opportunity for the CIO in IT. 
If these processes can be made more efficient through automation and continuous optimization, then money can be saved from existing IT budgets, which could be reallocated to fund more strategic initiatives like digital transformation, while also making IT employees happier, not having to spend their time doing boring manual tasks. In my Amazon best-selling book, The Next CIO, I discuss how CIOs can overcome these obstacles on their journey to realize an autonomous IT operation. To do this, CIOs and their staffs first need to assess the maturity of their processes that touch their broad technology landscape and span siloed point tools. I call these enterprise technology or ET processes. In this regard, the next CIO proposes a five-level ET process maturity framework to assess the level of maturity for IT's numerous ET processes. Then CIOs need a new category of application that enables them, at a minimum, to define in software the workflows that implement these ET processes using a low to no code user interface so professional services are not required. When processes are described in large PDFs, which is common in most IT shops today, few can follow them precisely, creating, among other things, compliance risks. Workflows defined in software, on the other hand, can be automated and utilize data to continually optimize themselves. This new category of application must also sit on top of the siloed tools using connectors to consume and express the data from the siloed tools required to inform the automated workflows, so no tools rip and replace are required. This capability can also ensure good, consistent data hygiene. After all, as a former CAO from Cisco shared with me, automating with garbage data just makes the garbage go faster. I call this application Enterprise Technology Management, or ETM. The ETM vision is CIOs will rely on software to observe, manage, and secure enterprise technology processes autonomously. And I'm excited to share that there is now at least one ETM application in the market, with more to follow. If you're interested in learning more, I invite you to watch the next episode where I click one level deeper to show the complexity of a typical employee offboarding process and how it can be automated through an ETM application. I also invite you to take a first step of assessing the maturity of a single IT process, such as employee offboarding, to understand what value you can achieve by automating this one process within your organization, knowing there are many other such manual processes, as you start your journey to running an autonomous IT operation.